Today is the day you've been waiting for. We're doing a head to head to head Napoleon style pizza video. Let's get into it. What's up barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name is Jake, you're watching Rum Cook. Today on the channel, it's an exciting day. We're doing the Yoder pizza oven, the Alpha 4 PZ, and the Komodo Komodo, a head to head to head Napoleon style pizza. I even made the dough myself. So we're gonna cook some pizzas and see how they compared. Now I have not tried them side by side and I actually have not done a Napoleon style pizza on my Komodo Komodo yet. So it's exciting for me, it's exciting for you and we're gonna talk about pizza. But before we can do that, we gotta get into the dough which I started two days ago and I'll put the measurements on the screen but I'll give you a quick walkthrough real quick. First we made a poolish, poolish, allows for the yeast and the flour to get together, get to know each other, develop some amazing flavor and amazing crust. And what you do is you put in 400 milliliters of water, 400 milligrams of flour, two grams of active yeast, half a tablespoon, same thing, teaspoon, sorry, and five grams of honey. You mix all that up, you let it go in the fridge for 16 to 24 hours. And in my case, I'm making five doughs. 250 grams each. And we just let that go for 18 hours. Then I let it come out and come up to room temperature. Then I mix in my final ingredients, which five pizzas is a total of 500 grams of water and 750 grams of flour. So we already had 400 and 400. So I added 100 milliliters of water and 350 grams of flour. And I added in 22.5 grams of salt, mixed all that up, and then we started to make our dough balls. Now, the one thing I'm gonna tell you is like when you work with this dough, it's wet. And in this case, I needed it by hand because if you use a KitchenAid dough hook attachment, it doesn't do nearly as good of a job. But in this case, I did it by hand. And what I did is I kneaded it for about five minutes. And then what I did is I put some olive oil on it. I put some saran wrap over top of it. I let it just kind of rest for about five minutes. And then I kneaded it again for about 12 minutes. And you can see as we're kneading it, it's getting smoother and smoother and smoother and it's getting less sticky. Now it's still gonna be sticky, that's fine. You just gotta be aware of that. Use the scraper to clean your hands off. Keep getting what's on your hands back in the dough. And then finally, you've got a pretty good looking dough ball. You put some olive oil on it and you put some more saran wrap on it and then you wait. Good 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes the gluten re relaxes and now your flour and dough and everything is going to be a, a lot smoother. It's going to be well hydrated and relaxed. So now then you just make one more dough ball, put some more olive oil on it and some saran wrap and let it sit for an hour. You do not want air touching it, right? Going to double in size and at that point you can make your dough balls. So for me, it was late. So you have two options there. Make your dough balls, 250 grams each. Put some flour on the bottom. You can put them on a cookie sheet or you can get these, these uh, containers that I have and let them sit for two hours and then you can go make pizza. Or in my case, I threw them in the fridge overnight and then I let them sit out for almost three hours the next day because what happens when they're in the fridge, they're gonna slow rise. And as they come up to room temperature, they'll finish proofing, get a little larger and you'll be ready to go. So it's really not that difficult. You're gonna have to try it a couple times, then you'll get better at it. But I highly recommend you learn how to make your own dough because it will go a long way. Now I can't take credit for the recipe Vito uh, Icapelli. I'll put a, his face over here. I bought his pizza class and taught me a lot. So if you're into making pizza, you wanna learn how to make pizza, step up your game, I re recommend that. Uh, you watch a bunch of his videos at a minimum. He knows his stuff and uh, his videos are entertaining. So check those out. So now it's time to make some pizza. First, we gotta fire everything up. So we went over the Komodo Komodo. We dumped in some Fogo charcoal. Now we're gonna use a whole basket because we wanna get our temps up. So I filled it up pretty high. We got out a grill gun. We started it up and that took about a minute. I made sure that I got different spots inside the, the basket so we get some even cooking. And from there, I put together my Yoder, vacuumed out first, don't forget about that. And then we started that guy up. And finally, I went over to my Alpha 4 PZ started a fire again using my grow blazer grow gun because that's the easiest way to do it threw some wood on and now we're up to temperature let's go get our dough let's make some pizza now i'm not going to go super in depth on how to make this i have other videos there i will show you that we've got five dough balls if you don't have one of these things they're great because 
They're smaller ones than you normally see, and I can put two in the fridge so I can have 10 dough balls. I will share with you a couple tricks as we go. All right, we just want to be able to pick this up a little bit. This is just regular dough here. This will just help it so it doesn't stick. And you can put a little bit on your board. You do not need much, especially on a wooden board. But remember which side's which, right? So we just put the bottom or the top in first. So we're gonna pull that out and we're gonna push all the air out to the outside. This has got a big air bubble. Now this will just burn, right? So you gotta pop those. So you've got a nice little crust there. And remember, you can stretch this a little bit. This dough is very forgiving. It's got some good structure to it, so you can get some good size on it. I'm not gonna go crazy size today. That's it. All right, one thing you wanna do that I forgot to do is just wipe this extra flour away. You don't want that. Probably not the best thing to do to wear a black shirt. Pro tip. <laughs> but so we've got this. I've made pizza sauce before, so I'm not even gonna get in this. This is just crushed, or sorry, canned tomatoes that I pulsed in a blender two times. A little olive oil, tablespoon of salt, tablespoon of pepper, and that's it. Nice fresh sauce. One thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna put too much sauce on this. And then we just got some fresh mozzarella. Now, looking at this, I could have made it a little bit bigger. So what we'll do as soon as we get it on the peel, we'll stretch it out a little bit. And traditionally, Napoleon style pizza does not have a ton of cheese on it. There are no rules, you do you, and just a little bit of olive oil. And if my basil plant didn't die, you can always add some basil. This is a critical moment, right? So right now, you don't want it stick on the board too long because it's gonna stick. You wanna get it on your peel. And speed is your friend. Okay, so put a little bit of flour in here, in the bottom, maybe some on your, your peel, and then all you do is you just grab your dough underneath, right? Now we're sliding, you got a little flour there, and now if you want a bigger pizza, you stretch and you make a bigger pizza. And I really could have stretched this a lot bigger. And if you want, and you've stretched it big enough, you could add some more cheese to it, right? Put a couple more pieces in there. That's it. Now, bring you over here. We're gonna do the kimono kimono first, and I know you're gonna to wanna to make sure they're pretty equal. Now, I can't get them dead equal for all the food scientists out there, but you'll get the picture. When you're running a kimono kimono this hot, any kimono style grill, really, you, you wanna burp it, or you will have a flare up. Let's see what we're at, 670. 705, so we're pretty, got some good, good temps in there, right? Hopefully you can see that on the camera, wrong way. Uh, but yeah, 707, 705, 700, we're good. Now what we're gonna do is launch that guy right like that, close it up, and we wait. Not very long, probably less than three minutes, maybe around two and a half minutes. There's two minutes there. You can see it's getting a little crispy on that one side. It's a little hotter. We're just gonna rotate it. It's like a baby Napoleon style pizza. All right, you can see the cheese starting to burn. We're gonna pull that off. So there we go. Pretty good looking pizza. I was taking some videos, so I, I burnt the cheese a little bit. Whew, you can see the, the bottom. And look, we're gonna put it on a rack here just so we can keep it crispy. So because it's 40 degrees outside, there's no way for me to get these side by side. Not with a one man show. So we're gonna try this real quick. I am gonna use scissors because I've only got this small working surface here. And don't get on my board. So you won't be able to tell because I use scissors. Good airy. It's got some crunch. It's definitely soft in the inside. That's really what we're looking for. But more importantly, how does it taste?
don't know who made that dough, but I might have a side gig in making pizza if it doesn't work out on YouTube. Mm, that's good. That's a really good pizza. If you've been around for a while, you know that I've been a big fan of Komodo style pizza for a long time. You still get a little bit of that heat firing down as the dome heats up, uh, but they can go super hot and get that flavor of the, the lump in there. So really turns out a, a really good pizza. So I, I'm happy with that. Uh, I don't know, gotta wait till we try something else to give it to something to compare it to. Before I do that, real quick, 2023, I'm doing a new thing where I'm doing a, a contest every single video. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you two hashtags. All you got to do is be subscribed to the channel, like the video, and use these hashtags in the comments, and you're going to get entered in the contest at the end. I will announce at the end, but I just want to remind you while I'm here. Let's put this pizza aside and get one on the Yoder. Truth be told, that'll probably go to my wife, but we'll make another pizza here real quick. Now the one thing I didn't mention in my dough, if you're gonna do this style pizza in your oven, you wanna put about 20 grams of olive oil in there that'll help kind of fry it from the inside. If your oven doesn't get hot enough, pinch, push, away you go. We'll stretch this out. Let's check out our stone in the Yoder. So we're 710 to 680. 707, 711, we're very, very close to what the Komodo Komodo was. I am gonna give this a quick brush. We'll launch our pizza in there. Close that up. And again, I'm gonna put my timer on for about three minutes. The final cook time of this was closer to about three minutes and 40 seconds, just so you have an idea. It's been two minutes. We'll have a look at this guy, maybe give it a quick rotate. Not too bad, not too bad. I didn't get it all in the oven all the way. Kind of botched my delivery. So we'll push it in this time a little further and we'll give it about another minute. Here's a minute and a half, let's have a look. Give it a rotate. Come along nicely. We'll rotate that around. We're at three minutes. Let's see how we're looking. Not too bad, I should have rotated it one more time. But the rest of it's done, so we gotta get it off. Ooh, don't drop it. So not too bad. Not too bad. There's the bottom. I wish I'd done one more rotation there. Just so we equaled out the edges here a little bit. See these? These are bubbles that I didn't, I didn't pop. If you pop them before you put them in the oven, you won't get that. Uh, but looks pretty good overall. We're gonna let this cool down just for a minute and then I'll cut into this one. So it's been a minute. Let's cut into this guy. Look at that cheese. Not too bad. Got the crunch on the outside that we're looking for. That's a terrible size piece. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Again, some good pizza. It is a slightly different taste. Obviously you can't taste a lump. You can't necessarily taste like wood, but you can taste the flame touch the was really close to the outside. It's just a slightly different flavor. I'm gonna share some thoughts at the very end. I am enjoying it. Right, I don't know. So far, you'd be happy with any of those. They're, both of those are really good. We gotta do the wood-fired pizza oven now. Let's go check the temperature of it. Let's check out our wood-fired oven. We're about 697. 703 right in the middle there, and then we start to cool off a little bit. I think we're close enough. Try to make them as equal as possible. Keep the heat in, and let's make a pizza. Yeah, 
And for this one, <laughs> it'll probably be done in two and a half minutes. So we will uh, keep a close eye on it. So this one, you gotta turn around quick. And one minute down, do another minute. We're done. One, two, three. Ooh, almost dropped it. Maybe get a little color on there, but I think we're pretty good. There's two and a half minutes. So let's have a look. Good crust. Good crunch. Looks pretty good. We're gonna give this guy a minute to cool down like the rest. And again, we'll just use scissors and see how we taste. All right, it's been a minute. Let's have a look-see. There we go. So the one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is we've got a little bit of a softer crust on the bottom. We've got the crunch and the softness that we're looking for. Mm. Something so simple. It's like a little slice of heaven. That's some good pizza. Let me clean up real quick and I'm gonna share some final thoughts with you. Here's the Kimono Kimono. This is the Yoder. This is the wood-fired one. Three minutes and 40 seconds. Three minutes, two and a half minutes. So right away, there's a difference in how long they cook. As a result of that cook time, the Komodo Komodo had a little bit of a harder crust. The Yoder got a little bit more softer and you saw really, where it really shined is on the pizza oven one. Yeah, I mean, it, you can even see that they've been sitting there for a little bit. Like that one's pretty firm. That one's got a little give before you hear some crunch. And this one, you can just see like it's softer in the middle, like I can actually put my hands in it and you can feel it. But really when I took a piece of that, you could see that it, it bent pretty easy and it was kind of floppy, which is how Napoleon style pizza, uh, traditional Napoleon style pizza is, you really want a soft crust with hard outside and then soft on the inside and chewy. So hence why <laughs> this is the pizza for a wood fired oven. Flavor wise, the Komodo Komodo and the Yoder were very, very close, but different. So in this guy, I could taste the lump, which I enjoy. Uh, I've been cooking on Kimono Grills for six years, so I really do enjoy that flavor and it's unique. Um, this guy didn't have like a lot of wood flavor or anything. However, you could taste that char from the flames coming over. So it was a, it was a completely different taste. Good as well. This one here, you could taste the wood right away. I mean, there's a reason why wood fire pizza is so good. And when you've got, you know, a live fire burning in there, giving off some smoke, it is giving it that extra flavor. And the good thing is, is that, you know, I can hold it right up in the dome for three seconds just to get a little bit more smokiness into it. And you could do five seconds if you had the time and it's just gonna give that much more flavor. But right out of the gate, you know that this one's got the wood fire taste uh, that really makes it shine. However, all of these are delicious. I mean, I think if you did any of these at home, you're gonna be super ecstatic with it. It really comes down to the dough, right? Dough and temperature, make yourself a good sauce and go to work. I mean, you can make some phenomenal pizzas. All of these are winners. I would serve these to anyone and be perfectly happy with it. Really for me, when it comes down to the next time I make pizza, it's gonna be, how much time do I have, right? The Kimono Kimono takes the longest to get up the temperature, especially when it's cool outside. I mean, when in, in the summer, it's a little different, but we're 40 degrees, so I did let it get up the temperature a little slower. Uh, you know, the Yoder gets up to temperature super quick, and this guy gets up to temperature super quick as well. These two are very, very close to each other. 
Uh, but really just a matter of how much time you have and if you want to babysit something. Um, obviously the, the, the big drawback to a wood fired oven is that it, there's a big learning curve and it takes a little bit more work to maintain a fire and to turn out pizza after pizza. Whereas these two, once they're up to temperature, as long as you got enough lump in there and you got enough pellets in there, you can just fire in pizzas. So these are a little bit easier to use. At any rate, I think they're all delicious. We got to do a contest. Hashtag is going to be pizza, pizza, same, you got to say it twice in the comments though. So you've got to be subscribed to the channel, you've got to like the video, and you've got to say some comment, give me some feedback with two hashtags of pizza. That'll enter you into the drawing. We're going to give away a $25 gift card to appbq.com. Once I pick a random comment, I'll do it live in my next video. I'll leave you a message. You can email me. We'll prove it's you. Get your email address, and then I will send you a $25 gift card. And if you're a Patreon member, that's new to the channel, but if you're a Patreon member, all Patreon members get two times the contest prize. So you'll get 50 bucks. So before we can go any further, we've got to do our drawing for last week's contest. And we had... The Targan Foods and Crispy Smoked Chicken were the hashtags you had to use. You have to use both of them and they have to be in a comment. So we've got that and let's see. 41 unique comments. So if you give a couple comments, I'm not counted in there. And just to give you guys an idea, like you see, I'm doing this at a completely different time. I do this at the last minute before I post my video. That way you're getting almost a week to comment hashtag to be entered in the contest. So let's, uh, let's pick a winner. Ernesto Flores. I've been doing the parboil trick on my wings for a few years now. Total game changer. I love the way you think. He's got the hashtags, so. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to comment on your comment, I'll get you to email me, and we'll prove who you are, and we'll get you that $25 gift card. Let's get back to the video. So hopefully, you got some value in this video. I tried my best to keep them as even as I could. Obviously, that's a little difficult when I'm running across a patio. However, I, I think they turned out good. Very interesting for me to really, to taste the flavor differences because I've never tasted them side by side, and to see how the crust was different the length of time was cooked. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, do so below. If you want to join the contest, give it a thumbs up and leave those hashtags. I'll see you soon.